there's the old cliche that the possibility of suicide makes existentialists out of us all. And I think that we all get that. Um, every moment of every day we're faced with the possibility, even if we don't ponder it, of checking out, ending it all. Uh, that's an interesting thought, um, and it's, a, it's an interesting comment on our freedom. In other words, no matter how bad things get, we can end it. Now, I'm not saying that it's an easy thing to do. I'm not saying that um, anyone who opts not to do this is doing so uh, simply because they want to go on living. Um, I can imagine. I've never actually held the gun to my head, but I can imagine that deciding to kill yourself is not something that's lightly done. Um, but the option is at least there. And uh, to use suicide um, as a means of understanding existence, uh, you don't even need to be suicidal. You don't even need to want to actually do yourself in. You can use suicide as um, a sort of a litmus test for your life, um, even if you have every intention of living out your days until in the normal course of events, uh, you uh, end. That's, you know, you, you are extinguished by reality itself. You can still avail yourself of the phenomenon of suicide to approach your life. Um, and it, interestingly, of course, it does put a lot of things into a completely different perspective when you sort of say, okay, I always have options. A lot of people end up sort of feeling extremely trapped by life. There's the case in point of the uh, middle class uh, midlife crisis in the mail. He has a nice big house in the suburbs. He's got a, a wife that he might have married for the wrong reasons. He's got a nice car, a wonderful life, and he kind of loses it and starts to drive sports cars and wears a chain and a comb over and dresses like a young man and people kind of ridicule him. Um, but he's sort of questioning the bedrock of his life. There's an existential crisis that happens to a lot of people, I guess, around when they get about my age. Uh, perhaps a bit older, I don't know. It ha doesn't seem to have happened to me yet, but I'm sure it will. Um, you can sort of say, okay, um, my life doesn't really have any meaning. All right, abolish yourself. Oh, <laughs> I suddenly realized that my life has whole, a whole pile of meaning. I didn't notice it. I, I didn't notice that there's all kinds of stuff that I like to that I like about my life. Um, or, uh, you know, that that's that's how you can sort of add or at least point out what meaning your life has, even though you don't realize that it has meaning. Um, <clears throat> There's an interesting, one of my favorite authors of all time is Charles Bukowski. He's a, sort of the poet laureate of Skid Row, he's been uh, called, where one day he decided that he'd had enough. He suffered from bad anxiety all of his life. He was a more or less a, an angry failure, who sort of opted to be a failure. He was disgusted by life. He was disgusted especially by his fellow human beings, and he was certainly disgusted with himself. So... One day he goes back to his cheap uh, flat in uh, East L.A. somewhere, or room really, probably where he lived, turned the gas ring on, laid down and went to sleep. Woke up in the middle of the night with a splitting headache. <clears throat> and the headache was enough to tell him, look, you damn fool, you don't want to kill yourself. Um, and he kind of laughed, just turned the uh, gas ring off went out and got drunk and did what he always did, probably got beaten up in a useless bar fight or um, initiated a short-term relationship with a, shall we say, emotionally damaged woman. <laughs> um, but that was his sort of way of regaining meaning in his life. He sort of looked at his life. I live in a cheap rooming house. I'm an, I'm an alcoholic, a crashing alcoholic. I have a dead-end job. Um, my 
sex life consists of women who half the time I'm not sure whether or not they want to actually have sex with me or kill me or maybe they want both um, my uh, recreation is three or four day drinking binges and I generally drink in order to deal with the enormous rage that I feel against everybody else and against myself so that's you know I've got a pretty lousy life here so I'm going to end it so I decide to gas myself in my sleep and suddenly I'm faced with the possibility of it being of it actually happening a failed suicide attempt that luckily didn't end up uh, causing permanent damage or nothing debilitating I guess uh, and he realizes at that moment that he doesn't really want to kill himself but it did sort of grab him by the hair and force him to look at himself in the mirror and sort of become uh, an existentialist in many ways Bukowski was an existentialist although he thought well, he spoke of the existentialists as always being idiots and posers and all this kind of thing but he was one himself, and I think that he understood that. <clears throat> he talked about existence more or less constantly. He mo wrote about himself all the time. That's all he ever wrote about, pretty much, was himself. So he came back to this question of suicide, this question of the justification of existence. Is there anything, not so much that I have to live for, but is there anything that I want to live for? Is there anything that has meaning here for me and yes there was he needed to actually get an, an alter an alternative perspective that of suicide to make him realize this now, this is why I think that thinking about suicide or using suicide as sort of a a, um, a litmus test or a measuring tape or something like that towards one's life is not necessarily a morbid thing do you have anything to live for I don't think that that's a dangerous question. I think that it's a healthy question, ultimately, um, because we have the means of checking out. We have the means of ending it. It's not easy. It's not always easy. And it doesn't always work, as Bukowski said. And I can imagine what it's like to bungle a suicide using alternate means, like firearms or explosives or poison or something like that. It must be a ghastly business. Uh, surviving that kind of a suicide attempt, you can imagine what that might result in. <clears throat> so I'm not trying to make light of this. But what I'm saying is suicide as a concept. Um, it's also an interesting comment on the cogito, cogito, you know, uh, I am. Um, if I get to the point where I don't see any value in my continued existence, I can make the decision whether or not I can carry through with it, but I can make the decision to end it. First of all, what agent, what entity, what being, what thing is confronted with the existential dilemma? What is it that has to look around and say, is this worth continuing? There's your I. I can't see how that could be anything other than an I. That's not something, that's not just a bunch of drive that's, that's uh, sort of deterministically pushed around. It's, it does strike me as there's something there that's seeking self-justification. Uh, and it has to decide whether or not it is going to continue. When you seriously consider suicide, what is it that you want to do? There's any number of reasons to commit suicide. And I don't mean overt reasons. You can want to escape something. You, want, you can want to escape pain. You want to um, end harm. Harm has enormous value to you. Therefore, if you kill yourself, you no longer are subject to harm. And again, I'm not making, I'm not saying this is a solution to this, but what I'm saying is just as a concept, suicide will say, you know, let's say you have a means of perfect, painless, infallible suicide. Uh, 
<clears throat> that will fix your problems, at least as a concept. That's one reason to commit suicide. The other reason is meaninglessness. That's not the same thing as harm. Um, meaninglessness in Charles Bukowski's case, I have a pointless life. It's not going anywhere, and there's nothing in it that I want. I've drank enough beer, I've, you know, chased enough um, broken women, I've got into enough fist fights, I've done enough pointless, enough pointless work in my life, I've written enough poetry, I've, I've you know, composed enough uh, short stories and that sort of thing, and there's just, there's nothing here anymore. That's not the same thing as saying my cup runneth over, I can't take this anymore. Unless, of course, you were dealing with boredom, and boredom is a species of agony, which I think a lot of people underestimate, even when it's affecting them, them themselves. Boredom is a killer. Um, there's also the idea of um, the, the reason to commit suicide could be that I was terribly disappointed in the way life was going. I was madly in love with a woman. She rejected me. I simply couldn't deal with life anymore without her. There's an element of pain there, and there's also an element of you staked everything in life on this poker hand that you had, and somebody you had a straight flush, somebody else had a royal flush, and that was the end of you. Uh, you staked everything on one throw of the dice, and you lost. So you could have made it if you'd gotten what you wanted, but you didn't. So, boom, time to check out. That's another reason to commit suicide. It's another reason to want to end yourself. What do they all have in common? Well, they have in common the idea that there's some entity there that is choosing whether or not it's going to continue to exist. Um... That's an eye, if you ask me. I, I don't really see any way around that. Um, and I don't really see how uh, it's a necessarily negative, nihilistic thought, um, contemplating one's own extinction, even willing one's own extinction. Um, I think that it's a taboo in our society that, it, that really shouldn't be. Um, I don't think that we should encourage anybody to do it, I guess, but we shouldn't mystify it to the extent that we have. It, for the very reason, I suppose, is that mystified or not, people are going to continue to do it. <clears throat> so, um, do I want to exist? Okay. Uh, do I want my consciousness to continue? Do I want my existence in this plane of existence to continue? Um, that's, it, I don't think it gets much more existential than that. Um, well, yeah, actually it can, but um, I've dealt, in, uh, dealt with that in another couple of videos. But it's an interesting sort of tool to measure the value of your consciousness or your existence. Would you end it if you had the chance? to do so painlessly. Now, there's no point in getting into, shall we say, an antagonistic discussion with somebody on that, because you eventually end up in a situation where you're, you believe that you're daring the other guy to commit suicide, or calling him or her uh, a fake, because they talk about suicide, but they're not really going to do it, so we really can't uh, take anything that they say seriously. I think that this kind of a discussion is the only it can only be take place internally. Um, now I think that a lot of us think about it a lot more than we realize. 